Hey everybody, today I want to give you my five tips for growing petunias that are this size into those giant containers that are balls of color that last the whole season long. So I've got a couple things that have been very successful for me and I've had very good luck with petunias, so let me share those with you right now. First thing that people underestimate is just how much of a heavy feeder a petunia can be. Petunias love their fertilizer and I find that I often will put like a time release fertilizer in there once a month and that's just kind of to be my catch-all because I'm not as consistent with my liquid fertilizer as I always want to be but I do like to try to keep on a schedule of one time per week with a water soluble fertilizer so that's like a miracle grow proven winners makes one there's another one called beat your neighbor lots of other ones I usually choose the ones with the bloom boosters but pretty much as long as you're giving them some kind of fertilizer they're gonna benefit from that uh, those bloom boosters tend to have the nutrients that they like to produce a little bit more flowers so that's the route I go and also like I said they love that consistency of once a week but if you miss a week in there don't worry about it you can skip the week or you can kind of move it to another day it'll be fine now i know other people who have a little bit more of a scientific method so there's some people who will put fertilizer in their water once every third watering and they find that that's the consistency that way as the season goes on and they need more water they're giving it more fertilizer as it's taking up more water because they figure it needs more nutrients those people have beautiful petunias i will say that and then other people are more, you know what, I put fertilizer every single time, but I put like a half dose or a one third dose. And that way the plant's always getting fertilizer. So either method will work. I find too, if I'm using a self-watering pot, I like to use that kind of lower dose but I just fill it in there because I can't tell how much water those plants are taking up from you know, the, the reservoir. So that's, that's how I do it with those. So don't underestimate how important the fertilizer is. Next thing I'm gonna tell you about is gonna be probably the pot size, because that's another area that people really go wrong on. Like they'll go to one of the big box stores and they get like an eight or a 10 inch pot. And a lot of times those pots will have like four or five plants in it. Well, let me tell you, if you put four petunias in an eight inch pot. It'll look great in the beginning, but you're not gonna be able to keep that water. That plant, when we get to the kind of hottest part of the season, you're gonna need to be available to water that three times a day in order for that thing to survive. So if you haven't, if you're gonna use an eight inch pot, I'd say just put one petunia in there and it'll probably fill it out very, very nicely. I tend to stick to like 12 or 14 inch or larger for petunias. And I did a whole video where I had 12 and 14 inch pots and all of them only had one, two or three plants in it. And those are you know all petunia baskets. You might do a mixed basket, might be a little bit different, but it's really surprising that if you give them enough room in the pot, how big some of these more vigorous varieties, and that's the important thing, I'll get to that next, uh, the different varieties, but how important it is to give it enough room to grow. And if you do, over time, you're gonna get a much bigger plant than if you packed a whole bunch in. And it's hard when you're kind of putting these things into the, your pots and you see these kind of empty spaces and you can see the, the dirt, you're thinking, oh, this isn't enough, I better put one more in. With petunias, not so much. So a lot of times, if it's like a super petunia vista, it's one of the big giant varieties, I only put one in a 12 inch pot or a 14 inch pot and they will fill out very, very nicely. Otherwise, if I'm doing one with just all one color, I'll just put two in there and they'll fill out. And that's what the case with a lot of the vigorous varieties, not just those Super Tunia Vistas or the Color Rush series or you know those kind. It can work with a lot of the other trailing type petunias. And then if I have two colors in, a lot of times I'll have three plants in there. So I'll choose one uh, for the center and that'll be one color. And then I'll put one on each side of it and that'll be the other color. Now at first it's gonna kind of look like a little rainbow because it's not filling in on the side, but it doesn't take long for petunias to start growing outward. They fill up whatever space is available, so they'll, it will cover up the whole pot. Uh, you just gotta give it a little bit more time. So if you're gonna use less plants, give it a little more time and it'll fill out very nicely, but you'll be rewarded with having to water a little bit less. Now some people love to put, you know, they get a 14 inch, they put five, they put seven plants in there and that's fine. They will grow very well, but be ready for you know a lot more watering and needing that little bit more care. So that's, that's where I'm gonna go with that. Next thing I'll talk about is gonna be the varieties. And people will tell me like, oh, it doesn't matter. A petunia is a petunia. And I've grown a lot of petunias and I have to say some varieties are just better than others. They're not all created equal. So some of my favorite varieties, and I'm gonna talk mostly about vigorous varieties because I tend to like a vigorous uh, trailing petunia. There are upright petunias, so you wanna check your tag for that. But like, my favorites are gonna be the super tunia, the surfinias, and the super cows. Super cows are actually a pet koa, which is a cross with a caliber koa, but they look like a petunia, especially like the premiums in those. But then there's, a, there's several other varieties. So there's the cascadias, uh, sanguna, headliner, flower showers, uh, funhouse, durabloom, 
Wave would be another one. Wave is a really popular one. So all of those do very well. If you don't mind smaller flowers, there's Deco, the Itzy, and like the Enviva Petcoa and the Caliburst Yellow Petcoa. Those are all kind of smaller flower ones, but they get really good coverage and they will you know, cascade over the edge of a pot. So all of these varieties are kind of in my favorite you know, kind of category. There's hundreds of different varieties out there. So, you know, I'm not, you know, you're not limited to just these. Crazy tunias are really cool colors and, you know, they usually get a decent size. Uh, you know, what if, if I start thinking about it, I'll start thinking about probably another 20 varieties. But those are, the ones that I mentioned are going to be kind of my favorites. A lot of people will tell me I will not spend the big bucks on those fancy hybrid petunias out there like the super tunias or any of those other ones. And I'm going to tell you something. I have had such good luck with those that I that those are my go-tos. However, if you've had good luck with seed petunias, that's great. Seed petunias oftentimes though are a little bit more work. And that's because petunias that are started from seed, their whole goal is to produce seed. And once a petunia produces seed, quite often they kind of go into retirement. So they're still kind of blooming, they're still producing a little bit, but definitely not at the level that they were like earlier in the season. So I tend to say, you know, if you have a seed petunia, just be prepared to do more deadheading because that's going to keep them flowering because, you know, until they go to seed, they will keep producing at that level. But you've got to keep on the deadheading usually. Now, if you have a variety that you've had really good luck with and you haven't had to do a lot of deadheading with and it's a seed variety, please let me know in the comments because people are constantly telling me like, oh, my seed ones are great. They're fantastic. And every time I ask them, well, what kind do you have? They never reply. It's like crickets out there. So if you have one, let me know. Probably the most popular seed variety though is the wave so if you're starting petunias from seed the wave is a very reliable one and it is one that i've grown many times and it, it is a very good one uh, also now the caliburst yellow petcoa is available for seed and that's a really nice one that's one with smaller yellow flowers but it just gets covered in them so seed ones i'm i don't want to diss them but i haven't had as good a luck because the hybrid varieties tend to just keep going and going and as long as they're getting enough you know food and water they tend to you know, go nonstop. And watering is the next thing that I'll talk about. You do wanna make sure that you keep them moist. That's what I find. They, they just like staying kind of damp. They can handle a dry down. So if it gets, you know, you miss a watering and they dry right down, they'll be just fine usually. And if they start to droop, hopefully you catch them in time. They usually recover, but sometimes you have to kind of, you know, give them some recovery time, which can take up to two weeks for them to bounce back, which is unfortunate, but at least they, you know, don't die off on you. So they're, they're somewhat drought tolerant. They just might not look as good for a little while. The other thing you absolutely have to watch out for, petunias have a couple pests that tend to bother them. So in our area, it tends to be earwigs and you'll see damage in the flowers. They tend to eat the inside of the flower and it's a pretty easy way to treat them. We use Sluggo Plus, uh, so you'll wanna check the packaging and that's an organic solution. So you can put these pellets in, you only put a couple in, you don't need a lot. And we find that that just takes care of the earwigs. We don't have to worry about it. Also keeps any snails off of them as well. Uh, in other parts of the country though, people have a real big problem with bud Worm. And so budworm you do spray with a product called BT. It's also an organic product. So you're not putting really harsh chemicals in general uh, to treat these. You're just you know able to do this. But BT you do have to put on once a week. Uh, the pellets we usually just kind of put them in once every other week or so. Uh, but both are good solutions if you want to have you know the, the petunias out there and you have those pests that kind of come in. I haven't had problems with deer eating my petunias. Uh, they go after the plants next to it, but not the petunias. That's been my experience, but I do know some people have had deer or rabbits come in and, and kind of take them down. So hopefully uh, you don't have that problem because petunias I think would be hard to keep sprayed uh, with like a deer repellent. So, you know, that's just my feeling on that. I do want to offer you some troubleshooting tips because I have heard from people who have said, you know, I started the petunias and they look great and then they went downhill. And most commonly they'll buy, you know, the 10 inch pot and they just have too many plants in there and they can't keep it watered. That's the most common problem. But if you've been kind of following the other uh, advice that I gave you and you notice that they kind of fail, or let's say you kind of missed a watering here or there, or maybe the fertilizing, you kind of got off track and you missed a couple of weeks and they're just not looking quite as good, petunias can bounce back from that pretty easily. So first thing I usually do is I look and see, you know, if there's any ugly parts or if there's any uh, kind of trailing arms or I, they're getting a little leggy, I usually trim those right back. And so I'll, I, you know, I'll just turn back to say 20, 25% or so. Um, if they're really looking rough, like they've had a complete dry down and they're really suffering, but there's still some fresh leaves in there, I will go cut them right back to the edge of the pot. Now it takes a lot longer from them for them to recover from that, but 
they'll come back looking really nice. Then usually the next day I start a fertilizer regimen and I make sure that number one, they're getting it. Usually I'll do it every other day. You could give them fertilizer every single day if you wanted to. They, it's not going to usually hurt them. I mean, you don't want a powerful fertilizer, but if you're following the instructions on the uh, container uh, and you give them like a double dose or give them more than what's recommended, they're going to do just fine with that. So you can give them that water soluble fertilizer, give them extra, and you should start seeing results. Usually in a couple of days, you'll notice results, but it's usually within a week to 10 days that you'll see that new growth coming on and, and a good recovery coming. Same thing if you notice that there's a hole in the middle, that can happen. Now, sometimes though, if they're not flowering a lot or you're getting those leggy plants, it might mean they're not getting enough sun. So you might want to move them into a spot that's a little bit brighter. I found that my petunias do pretty well in a part sun area, even into part shade, as long as they're getting a really good amount of direct sunlight for a good part of the day. And I'm saying like, well, I think I've pushed it to four hours, but I noticed there's less flowers in there. They really do like that six hours, but it can be morning sun. It can be part morning sun, part you know afternoon sun, part evening sun, you know, it can be broken up. Uh, so those are all little tidbits for you. Uh, and I get a lot of people saying, oh, you know, we can't grow those in our hot climate in Arizona or Texas or whatever. And I've talked to a lot of people in those really hot regions and they are able to grow petunias. I have some friends who grow them very successfully. I have uh, one friend who she just plants them on the north side of her house in a bright spot so it gets all that morning sun but it is protected from the afternoons, uh, you know, the hottest part of the day and she is in Tucson, Arizona. so. She gets really, really hot weather and hers actually winter over and they kind of go dormant for the winter and then she just cuts them back and they bounce right back. So and I noticed there's some uh, hotels around uh, southern Arizona that have petunias and usually I notice them on the, that north side. So that might be one solution. Also just talk to people who you see have petunias or go to your local garden center. If they're selling them, they should be able to give you some advice on what you want to, you know, what you, how you should grow them. Uh, and I noticed like the Dallas Arboretum, I've seen photos of their petunia displays and they've been very, very impressive. So that part of Texas, I know Texas is huge and I know West Texas is very different from, uh, you know, the Gulf and all that kind of stuff. So I know, uh, you know, there's a lot of different climates uh, that people have to deal with. And the fact is too, it is a little bit more work to grow things like petunias in say hot climates because you don't want them to dry down and that's what my friend also says like as long as they keep their water they do fine but the minute they start to dry out there's there's no hope for them so they are a little bit more work so you might want to go with something that is better in your area i have noticed on the proven winners website they've been pushing a lot of their heat tolerant plants so if you do have conditions where it's really hot and you're having trouble with petunias, I would look on there. You don't have to buy a Puru Winners plant, but they are giving you suggestions for plants that are going to do well. So I would recommend just checking that out because you might have some alternatives that'll work because I, I want you all to be successful. But hey, I've had great luck with petunias in Michigan. I'm not actually in Michigan right now. You might notice I'm actually visiting my niece. She's in New Mexico. And so I'm enjoying a little bit of nice weather uh, here in the Southwest. So it's been great. And I did pick these up just uh, over at like Lowe's. And I'll be honest, I got tricked because usually when you see this color pot, they're wave petunias, which are really reliable petunias. Uh, but then as I take a closer look, they're not labeled as wave at all. So I may have been duped. They look like nice petunias, but you know, I'm not sure what, what kind they are. So they're mystery ones. So I'm going to leave these with my uh, friends and family here and they'll be able to let me know how they do, I guess. So anyway, I will talk to you guys all very, very soon. Thanks for watching and good luck with your petunias.